This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to talk about whether Japan is in the process of blowing up the bond market. And by the bond market, I mean the U.S. Treasury market. So we've had this situation where the U.S. dollar has been really appreciating against every other fiat currency, and and it's especially been appreciating against the Japanese yen. That's what JPY is. We can see here that for all of 2022, it's really been going up. When this chart goes up, that means the US dollar is appreciating against the yen. When the chart moves down, that means the yen is getting stronger against the US dollar. Well, this finally reached a point where it was where it became intolerable. And we can see that there was an intervention just two days ago. We can see this very weird wide candlestick. But before I talk about that, I want to talk about why the yen has been weakening against the dollar or why the dollar has been appreciating against the yen. If we take a look, for example, at the government uh, US Treasury yields, we can see that the very close, the nearby ones are about 3%, the two years at 4.2%. Obviously, the Fed's been hiking a lot, so the curve, uh, the, the interest rates at the front end, the Fed funds rates are, are much higher than they are in Japan. But even if we look further out, we can see, for example, the US two-year treasury notes at 4.2%. The Japanese two-year treasury note is actually has a negative yield as we speak, minus 0.08. So you have these very wide interest rate differentials, not just at the front of the curve where the central bank sets yields using, uh, using Fed funds, for example, all the short-term yields, but also further out the yield curve. And so when you have yields much higher in one country than another, there's a tendency for that higher yielding currency to appreciate at the expense of the other one. Now, why is a weak Japanese yen a problem? It's, it's mostly a problem because Japan is a major energy importer. And they obviously do a lot of manufacturing there, which requires energy that they need to import. And most global energy is still priced in US dollars. So that's why we had this intervention a couple days ago, two days ago, I believe it was on Thursday, when the Bank of Japan, which is a central bank uh, for Japan, the BOJ, went into the market and they sold dollars and they bought yen in an effort to try to strengthen the, uh, to try to strengthen the Japanese yen. And that's what we saw on the chart here, this very wide candlestick. They tried to stop, uh, basically draw a line at 144, uh, yen to the dollar. As we said, BOJ, that's just the central bank over there. They've intervened many times in the past 20 years, but it was always to weaken the yen and not to strengthen it. So this is a very unusual occurrence, at least for the past couple of decades. Now, how does the Bank of Japan do this? Basically, in order to intervene in the FX markets, you need some cash, you need some some of that, that currency. And so this is where FX reserves come in and you may have it just sitting there as cash if you're a central bank, or you may have it invested in US stocks or in something like US treasuries. And what Japan has been doing, as far as we can tell, is they've been selling their US treasuries, which are US government bonds. They've been selling them for cash, collecting that cash, and then they go into the foreign exchange markets, the FX markets, they take that, those US dollars, they sell them, they use them to buy yen. And this helps to strengthen the yen. It helps to stop the yen from temporarily, at least from weakening against the dollar. So that's how these FX interventions work. In order to intervene, you need to have some currency to use to buy back your own currency. If you're finding this video helpful so far, I just ask you to hit that subscribe button, especially if you're not yet subscribed to the channel. So what happens when the Bank of Japan tries to raise US dollars that it's then going to use to sell for yen and intervene in the FX markets? When it sells US treasuries, this forces yields even higher on these US treasuries because yields move inversely to price. And paradoxically, this helps to widen those interest rate differentials, especially at the five-year and the 10-year points on the yield curve. And this indirectly makes the US dollar more attractive. FX appreciation really happens more due to the, the near-term yields, the very short-term yields. But you can see how if yields are higher in US treasuries, that this would make the US dollar more attractive at every point on the yield curve. And so paradoxically, as they're trying to strengthen uh, the yen against the dollar, they're actually weakening, uh, they're actually making the, the US dollar more attractive simply because they're helping to push up treasury yields that are denominated in US dollars. So 
BOJ selling treasuries, it widens those interest rate differentials, indirectly makes the US dollar more attractive. And this also makes the Fed's job a lot more difficult. And that's what I wanna talk about now. So if we take a look at the Fed balance sheet, this is all the assets that they're holding on their balance sheet that they purchased using freshly printed money. And part of part of their, their hawkish monetary policy and part of their tightening is not just raising interest rates, not just raising Fed funds, but also trying to shrink this balance sheet, which was just sitting at four trillion right before the pandemic got started. And it's now at eight trillion, just barely off the highs. And so this is a combination of US treasuries and US, US mortgage-backed securities that the Fed holds. And they would like to let these securities roll off their balance sheet in a, in a more severe situation. They might start selling them, but they would like to, to roll them let them roll off as they mature. And what this means is that the Fed is not buying new treasuries to replace those old treasuries that have matured. And so the Fed, if they're gonna do quantitative tightening, which is what it means to shrink your balance sheet, they're gonna be a net seller, or at least not a buyer of US treasuries. And so if you have Japan selling and you have the Fed selling, you can see where this is headed. The Fed wants to dump its treasuries, but this is very difficult if not just Japan, but also China and Europe are selling treasuries, or at least just not reinvesting the proceeds when they mature in order. And the reason they're dumping these treasuries is they want the US dollars to intervene and strengthen their domestic currencies. If we take a look at the major foreign holders of US treasuries, we can see Japan and China are at the top as they have been for a very long time. Japan started the year with about 1.3 trillion worth of US treasuries in January of 2022. It's now down to one point. 2 trillion, 1.234 trillion. So they actually haven't sold that much in terms of treasuries. China is down from about 1 trillion to 970 billion. These are the major, uh, the major holders. And then you can see as you move, as you move down the list, but this is, this is an issue because if you go all the way down here, down here, you can see the grand total is there's 7.5 trillion, uh, 7.5 trillion dollars worth of U.S. treasuries held by foreign, uh, foreign governments and central banks. And these can be used to defend their local currencies. And this is a this is a very large percentage of all the treasuries outstanding. They're currently about 31 trillion, and this is 7.5 trillion out of that. And so you have, at least for this year, Japan and China, which are the largest holders of US, tre US treasuries, they've been net sellers of US treasuries at the same time that the Fed wants to be a net seller of US treasuries as well. This is what's so crazy though. When the Fed hikes aggressively, the whole, wor the whole world blows up. You get these currency moves, other central banks have to try to intervene and fight what the Fed is doing. It's really a crazy, crazy system. So when is this all gonna end? Well, for now, the Fed does not seem to care about the weak stock market. I think we've retraced all of the gains from 2021, but we're still, still not back to where we were at the beginning of the pandemic. At least so far, the Fed doesn't seem to care about the weak stock market. The Fed is going to have to start caring soon, as we've been talking about, because tax revenues are plummeting. We're seeing this in, re in real-time data from some of the states like California and New York, and they're plummeting because people are not making any money in the stock market and the housing market, and so tax revenues are down. Lower tax revenues means that the US Treasury needs to sell more bonds, sell more treasuries to fund itself, and here's the big problem. Who is going to buy those bonds if the Fed is trying to sell bonds, trying to dump their treasuries, and other central banks are dumping them as well, like the BOJ has been dumping them, as we've seen, to try to intervene and defend the Japanese yen, to try to defend their currency. Now, one thing that the Fed does really care about, as we've said many times, even if it doesn't seem to care about the stock market in the short term, is it does care about a smoothly functioning treasury market. And if you have everyone trying to dump their treasuries, things can get very illiquid very quickly. You can get large bid-ask spreads. You can get very sharp spikes in yields. And this is not something that the Fed wants to see. They want, a, they want an orderly functioning treasury market because this is really the largest, deepest market in the world, at least when it comes to bond markets. So what happens if the Fed keeps tightening as they are pretending they're going to do, the US dollar is gonna to continue to keep strengthening against the yen because those interest rate differentials are gonna get wider. Then the Bank of Japan is gonna to have to come in, sell more US treasuries in order to try to defend the yen so that crude oil doesn't become too expensive for Japan. The more that the Bank of Japan dumps these treasuries, the sooner the Fed will need to stop tightening 
due to treasury market dysfunction, especially if the EU is selling, if EU countries are selling, and if China is selling treasuries as well. It's important to remember here that it's going to be a very cold winter in both Japan and Europe, neither of which countries are energy independent. They're very dependent on energy imports. And it's going to be a very cold winter with energy being, if it's even available, being very expensive, of course. Will these U.S. allies, and this is the key question, tolerate this very strong U.S. dollar much longer? They have domestic constituencies to answer to if people are freezing in their homes this winter. Uh, you can imagine that they'd be willing to throw any alliance with the U.S. or any agreement with the Federal Reserve or the U.S. Treasury. They'd be willing to throw these things under the bus in order to stave off uh, domestic unrest due to people getting very cold during the winter and this very dangerous, strong U.S. dollar. So the obvious move here, if you're playing sort of geo geopolitical chess, is for Japan and Europe to defect from their alliance with the U.S., and especially their alliance when it comes to opposing Putin and his actions in the Ukraine. If Japan and Europe want uh, want cheap energy, they're going to need to defect from this alliance and buy energy directly from Russia, either using using their local currency, so using the yen in the case of Japan, and using the euro in the case of Europe. And so this is one of the great ironies that U.S. policy might backfire, and we might be pushing our allies into the arms of Putin, especially, and this is what we talked about uh, yesterday or the day before, is that the U.S appears to be wanting to use this really strong U.S. dollar as a weapon, not just against China, but also against Putin. And if, they're, if the U.S. dollar keeps strengthening, though, ironically, it may actually push our allies, push the Japanese and the Europeans into the arms of Putin simply because they need to buy energy from him. And so this might end up actually driving our allies into Putin's open arms. You can hear more about this idea that the Fed is hiking to strengthen the dollar and weaponize it against Putin, which I'll link to in the video uh, in the description notes below. You can watch this video here. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.